Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you get the most for your Jeep. I'm Dino, your host. Glad to see you here. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about why you might want a trailer brake controller for your Jeep Wrangler, even if you don't own a trailer. We'll look at what the different models of trailer brake controllers are that are out there, and then we'll discuss how it is that I came to decide on getting the Red Art Tow Pro Elite. And then finally, I'll need your help in deciding where to mount this baby inside the Jeep. So stick around, I'll need you for that. So why would somebody be interested in having a trailer brake controller installed on their Jeep Wrangler, even if they don't currently own the trailer? Well, I can think of a couple examples off the top of my head. For instance, say you have a family member who's going to university and you have to move furniture there or back. Well, you don't even have to own a trailer. You could just rent it. You can go online from commercial establishments or onto Facebook Marketplace and find amazing deals to rent enclosed trailers to safely ship the material that you need to ship and you'll be able to do it safely because you have a trailer brake controller installed on your Jeep Wrangler. Or perhaps another and maybe more interesting example is say that you want to go camping whether it's the summer or the winter and you know you're only going to get out a couple times. Well it doesn't make sense to go and spend tens of thousands of dollars to purchase a travel trailer when again you could just simply rent them at a pretty decent price and enjoy the use of a travel trailer for those few times that you need it. Spending tens of thousands of dollars to purchase the trailer and then all the money you spend to maintain, to insure and to store that trailer just might not be practical. So you could rent and you could do it safely because you'll have a trailer brake controller installed on your Jeep Wrangler. But what about the different models that are out there? Let's have a look at them. For example, if you looked at last week's video, you could see that a couple of our viewers used the Tekonsha model, and that's a pretty traditional model where it's about the size of a deck of cards and it mounts inside the Jeep under the dash, perhaps against the side of the center console, and they're relatively inexpensive. And there's other models out there, for example, Kurt, as you can see on the screen, has this model, which is a rotary dial and it could be mounted somewhere on the dash. You could see it has a little disc type holder with a hole in the center where you could put a screw to keep the holder in place and another hole for your cable to be fed behind the dash. And this model can just get mounted nicely somewhere on the dash and it's a rotary dial and you can have easy access to the rotary dial to adjust your trailer brakes. Another model that Kurt offers out there is a Bluetooth model where you connect this trailer brake controller unit to your seven pin connector at the tailgate and then connect that trailer brake module to your phone via Bluetooth and you can do all your controls on your phone where you have it mounted on your dash. And then of course there's the Mopar trailer brake controller and it has a dial knob just like the Kurt unit does and this one fits right where your 12 volt cigarette lighter socket is right in the dash so it's like it's made to fit right there and it has progressive and manual adjustments as well. And then finally there's the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite and you can see this unit is very compact. The control module fits underneath and behind the dash so it's not visible and the only thing that you have that's visible on your dash is the control knob itself and this unit also like the Mopar unit has automatic as well as manual controls. Now how did I go about picking the one that I was going to install in my Jeep? Well let's first take a look at the Tecancha model. We saw that in last week's video couple of our viewers who sent in examples of the trailers they tow they use this model and it works so that's great it's also not very expensive but I didn't want to use this one because this module is mounted against your dash or against the side of the center console it would be visible all the time and for me I just wanted to get something that offered also the manual control and where the main unit is hidden behind the dash so I decided to look further so when I looked at what options were available from Kirk, the two options there seemed interesting in that you have the one which has the dial control and that's the only thing that's visible. 
and then the rest of the head unit for the trailer brake controller is hidden behind the dash that was appealing to me except that knob seemed pretty large and when I started thinking about where I would mount that in my dash I didn't find that too appealing the other offering from Kurt was the Bluetooth module where it connects into the 7 pin controller and everything's controlled through Bluetooth on your cell phone mounted on the dash of your Jeep. I didn't feel too comfortable about having to rely on the Bluetooth or on my phone or on that touch screen because I wanted something with a little bit more exact control. So that took me to the Mopar option which is designed to fit at the location where you currently have your 12 volt socket and I had some mixed feelings about that because I wanted to keep that 12 volt source and it is possible however if I did get the Mopar unit that I still mount the Mopar unit where the current 12 volt socket is and then just mount that 12 volt socket elsewhere like say the side of the center console but that's an extra step but there is another complication with the Mopar unit in that the 2018 and 2019 Jeep Wranglers are not compatible with the Mopar trailer brake controller for some reason. So that leaves me now with the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite. This is what's called a, a progressive trailer brake controller, which means the more that I press down on the brake of the Jeep, the more the brake on the trailer will be applied. So it'll be progressively more the more that I press on the Jeep's brakes. So that's handy for when you're on the highway and driving along like that, but the manual control also allows you to disengage the progressive mode and have a manual control on your trailer brakes and this is handy for example when if you're off-road or going down a very steep incline where you're in four low and controlling your descent in four low but you're not using your brakes but you need brake power on the trailer so that's where the manual control comes in and you could just dial that up to where you need the most perfect amount of braking applied to the trailer and you could do so safely. So that seems to be the one that fits the bill the best. So let's have a look at it. So here is the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite electric trailer brake controller. So this is the most up to date model. It's version three, it has some improvements with how the lighting works for the knob and the size of the knob unit so it can fit into certain places better. So let's have a look. Be careful when you take it out because there's no plastic in the packaging here. So this is the main head unit right here or the brains of the operation and this gets mounted underneath the dash. This is the knob switch and this is the knob itself. So this will fit somewhere behind the dash and I'll need your help in deciding where a good location for that would be. And then this knob is the only thing visible for the unit that's visible on the Jeep on the inside. This is a plastic nut that will be used to hold this to the dash. This is a little insert that I can use as a um, trim piece when I mount the switch or I could just mount it without this, we'll see. So this wire will run from the back of the switch into the main unit right here. Now this cable they also include with the package. If I wanted to, I could connect this to this main unit and then just splice into my seven pin wire harness. But I've ordered the JL specific wire harness which would just plug into the side of this unit and then into my seven pin wiring harness that I have in my Jeep because I have the trailer tow package. If your Jeep doesn't have that, you must also install the seven pin wire harness. And then the manual, of course, which has all of the directions. So that's the unit right there. And when we have this all installed, all I'll have visible in the Jeep is the control dial. So let's have a look inside the Jeep for some possible locations to mount this. Okay, so we're going to do this quickly because it's kind of cold out here and I need your help in deciding where I'm going to mount this switch which will be behind the dash somewhere and this knob which fits in front of it and will be the only piece that's visible on the inside of the Jeep. Now there are a couple potential locations. For example, there's the 12 volt socket right here because I could remove 
the 12 volt socket and use that space to mount the switch in the location where the 12 volt socket was and have mounted on the outside just this little dial in that location. And as you can see here on the screen from some Jeep Wrangler forums, that's where some people put the location for their red arc dial. So that's a good option as well. A good friend of mine has his on his A pillar. Now, if you look up here on the Wrangler JL, this piece of trim easily pops out. So you can see there's all this space right here for the switch to fit in. And then I would have to maybe take this plastic handle off with the bolts. And I showed you how to do that with the cell phone holder mount. And if you did that, you could then determine how to put a hole in here to feed your wire down the A pillar to get to the control unit just behind the dash here. So that's not a bad location because then the switch would be hid behind there and the dial could be just right here on your A pillar. So that's not too bad, actually. I did see online uh, that somebody installed the switch right in this location here, right in the center behind the gear shift lever. Now, that one's not bad too. Now, he did have to alter the switch a little bit to fit because this piece of rubber here is a little bit thicker than this is engineered for, whereas the plastic trim is thin enough that you won't have problems. So there was a little bit of finagling that he had to do to make it work there. But that's a pretty nice location there. It's right dead center, right behind the gear shift. Uh, the one concern I have about that is if I had to reach for it quickly and I had a coffee cup there, it might be a problem. Another location might be right here. I'd have to check, for example if there is space underneath that piece of trim, but that's not a bad location as well. And I did see one fellow online, and I'll have a link to his video, where he made a little panel right over here and put the control knob and the switch behind it against the panel so that the switch is located right here. That's not bad, but you use your limited amount of storage space, but that seems like a pretty good location so that as I'm driving, if I needed to reach for it, it's right there and I could see it. So that's not bad. And then finally, and I don't know if, you know, if this is ultimately the best location, but if you remember, I had this little kind of trim piece that came with the unit. And in this same area down here, if you look, I could just actually just force fit it the, right in that spot and the dial would fit right against it right there so I put numbers on the screen for each of those recommended locations feel free to let me know which of those locations you think would be the best and I hope that you found this information interesting and if you did how about giving the video a thumbs up but now let's move on to our tip segment now for some cheaper jeeper tips Owning a trailer, being a cargo trailer or a travel trailer, can be a huge expense as well as a hassle. Instead of having tens of thousands of dollars tied up in the travel trailer and insurance and maintenance and storage, you could just rent one for a reasonable cost for the times that you need it and avoid all the hassles. For us Jeepers, our towing capacity is not up to speed compared to a lot of the pickup trucks, so there's a lot of lightweight cargo trailers as well as travel trailers that are suitable for us Jeepers. And other than Facebook Marketplace, there are actual websites that cater to people looking to rent a travel trailer. You could rent it by size, by location, by price, and it's so easy to find the right trailer at the right price. RV Easy is one of those websites that I've heard about and I thought I'd share that with you so maybe you could have a look at that if you're interested in getting into travel trailers. In fact it's a great way to get into it to see if it's suitable for you before you actually even go and buy one for yourself. So I hope you found this information helpful. Now let's move on and hear what our subscribers have to say. 
And now for subscribers tips. This week's subscriber tip comes from last week's video on the viewers travel trailers. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, I'd prefer not to tow at or even near max towing capacity of any vehicle I have. Apply the 80% rule if possible. Signed, Bill. Hey Bill, thank you so much for sharing that tip. It would sure come in handy if you made a mistake on your calculations or if you encounter some headwinds or some steep grades along the way. Thank you very much. And if any of you have tips that you'd like to share, please feel free to put them in the comments section below as they may make it into a future episode. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I hope that you found it interesting, and if you did, how about giving this video a thumbs up? And if you're new to the channel, please feel free to subscribe and click the alert bell so you don't miss our next episode. Till next week, I'm Dino for Cheaper Jeeper TV. Be well, stay safe, take care.